According to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, there are approximately 90,000 missing persons in the United States at every, any given time. With the advancement of modern detective work and advanced scientific methods, such as genealogy testing, the vast majority of missing person cases end up being solved today. Even so, sometimes investigators just aren't able to provide enough conclusive evidence to put the pieces together on some of these cases, and they go unsolved. There have been some devastating, very suspicious missing persons cases in recent times that definitely fall into this category. Throughout history, though, all around the world, certain missing person cases have left investigators and families struggling to find answers. When there is little evidence to no evidence and no eyewitnesses, missing persons cases tragically end up being closed and unsolved. Come with us as we walk through some of the most puzzling and tragic missing persons cases throughout history all around the globe. Three months, five missing young girls, two bodies found, two possible serial killer connections, no arrests. In the summer of 1974, the sun was hot and it was Florida humid in Jacksonville. Barbara Streisand was crooning the way we were on the radio. Kids were out of school riding bikes, swimming in pools and hanging out at the corner store. Things took a turn in July, giving way to a terrifying three months. Five little girls would go missing. Decades later, Jacksonville investigators are still clueless as to what happened to them. July 21st, 1974. Jean Schoen, known as Jeannie, who was nine, was asked to go to the store for a pack of smokes for her uncle. The store was just two blocks away from the house. The clerk told investigators that Jeannie purchased the cigarettes, but forgot them at the store. She returned a retriever purchase, the clerk said. Jeannie told the clerk that she was going to go to a place called the Hangout with the change from the smokes to play pinball. She never returned home. The owner of the Hangout saw Jeannie and told her they were not open because he had just cleaned the floors. He told her to come back when the floors were dry. Two friends of Jeannie said that they were all together at the laundromat near the Winn-Dixie in Springfield when a man they didn't know approached them on a blue bike. He grabbed Jeannie and pulled her into the restroom with her. When they came out of the bathroom, Jeannie was crying and the man rode away with her on his bike. The girls tried to run after them, but they couldn't keep up. The girls told investigators that Jeannie didn't scream for help or attempt to fight the man off. He was described as white with light-colored hair that was styled kind of like Elvis Presley. Sergeant Dan Jansen with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office Homicide Unit recently told First Coast News' Katie Jeffries that there was nothing to indicate that Jeannie ran away. She wasn't a troubled child, he said. Pam Schoen, Jeannie's mother, took out ads in the Jacksonville Journal pleading for her daughter back. One of the ads read, This is a plea from Jeannie's mother, to whomever has my daughter. I know you have her because you also wanted a little girl to love, but I love her desperately. Need her return to me, please. August 1st, 1974. Annette and Milette Anderson were taken from their Jacksonville home on August 1st, 1974, less than two weeks after Jeannie's disappearance. This case is quite a tragedy, said Sergeant Jansen. Annette was just 11 and her little sister Milette was just six. They were left alone only briefly when their mother Elizabeth Anderson and their older sister Donna went to visit Elizabeth's sick sister. 
Their father, Jack, was headed home after a day of fishing. He even called home and spoke to the girls to check on them at 7 p.m. Jack could hear the dog barking in the background of the phone call, but Annette assured him that the dog is barking at the birds in the front yard. When Jack called again at 7.20 p.m., no one answered the phone. Police believe that in this short 20-minute window, the girls went missing. The, fa the girl's father returned home to find the family dog locked in a back bedroom, and Milet's favorite doll, the one she carried everywhere, also missing. Volunteers and officials search for the girls for days. A local paper reports that more than 100 square miles were searched in an effort to find them. Some witnesses said that they saw the girls in the days following their disappearance. Some said they saw the girls riding around in a pickup truck. Another said they saw the girls picking up bottles in a schoolyard. But neighbors said they saw a white car in the driveway of the Anderson home around the time the girls went missing. Donna Jeffries remembers the day her sisters went missing with clarity. Whoever went into the house would have to put the little dog up in mommy and daddy's bedroom because he would eat them up because he was so attached to Annette, said Donna, so badly. Donna believes whoever took her sisters must have had some plan because the family lived on a secluded road with only one way in or out. Their first mention of a serial killer in this series of disappearances comes up in the Anderson sisters' case. John Paul Knowles was, known, was a known serial killer in Northeast Florida at the time. He was killed as he attempted to escape prison. Before he attempted to escape, he wrote a letter about some of his victims and claimed that he was responsible for the disappearance and murder of the Anderson sisters. He said he left their bodies at the end of, of Commonwealth, but police scoured the area and never found either of the girls. I can't say that he is responsible for this, Sergeant Jansen said. I am leaning towards he is not. It is a false confession just based on some of the facts that we know of this case. Knowles was known for embellishing the number of victims he had killed for shock value. The Andersons held out hope that their two little girls would return home. Jack's entire life he stayed in the same house, and he kept the same phone number, said Sergeant Jansen. He made his wife promise that if he died before she did that she would never change anything in hopes that these girls would come home. Jack died before his wife, but he was buried beside a marker for Annette and Milette that has been has a birth date but no death date. Sadly, Elizabeth died before her daughters or the remains were found. September 27th, 1974. Virginia Helm was on her way to the store for soap when she disappeared. 45 minutes after she left home, Virginia's father became worried about his 12-year-old daughter and went looking for her, but he wouldn't find her. A search was conducted and many people were interviewed. Some witnesses reported seeing a red compact vehicle. This car would become important when, three days after she disappeared, a couple came upon a troubling scene. A red VW bug was pulled over to the side of the road in New Kings Road near the Nossa Duval border. A couple approached to see if the man needed help. In the back seat, they spotted a young girl matching Virginia's description, with her knees on the floorboards and her hands on the seat, as if she was tempting to get up. Her pupils were dilated and she was looking back and forth rapidly, as if she was scared, but she didn't say anything. When the couple confronted the man, he took off in a rush, leaving behind a bag that fell out of the car. Ted Bundy, who would kill a girl in Lake City in 1978, was also said to drive a VW Bug. The connection has been taken into consideration. He was, however, committing murders in Washington State in 1974. 
The bag was collected to be processed for fingerprints in 1974, but now it could be tested for DNA. Just a day before Virginia went missing, her friend Marianne was approached by a man in a red car who told her to get in or he would kill her. She ran for help instead, according to detectives. Marianne described Virginia as a quiet girl, but very kind. Virginia Helm was found murdered and buried in the woods near Beechwood and Beach Boulevard, said Sergeant Jansen. She was found shot in the head with a twenty-two on October 25, 1974, partially buried in the dirt and only wearing a blouse. Because of these cases, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office decided to reorganize and move all missing persons under the homicide unit. October 16, 1974 Twelve-year-old Rebecca Green was headed home from the store, only five blocks from her home, when she vanished without a trace like the four girls before her. She made it to the store, according to the clerk, but she never returned home. Searches for her turned up nothing. Rebecca wouldn't be found until three years later when her skeletal remains were located off of Fort Georgia Island near the mouth of the St. John's River in the summer of 1977. With Rebecca being the fifth missing girl in three months, police were in a hyper-vigilant state of mind. One of the detectives cut hair from her remains and put it into a plastic baggie and placed it in her file. This hair can now be tested to see if there is DNA that can be lifted off of the hair. If the suspect in this case had handled her head in any way, shape, or form in the act of committing this murder, Jansen said, there would be DNA remaining. If police are able to find DNA that is not Rebecca's, it would be a major find in this four-decade-old case. Nearly four decades later, police are still working to solve the crimes against these five girls in during those three grisly months in 1974. As it stands, the cases of Jean Schoen, Annette and Milette Anderson, Virginia Helm, and Rebecca Green remain unsolved. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office Cold Case Unit says it's taking a deeper look into the cases and following any possible leads, and bringing up the cases to the investigative standards of today. In conjunction with JSO, Project Cold Case, is working to help contact existing family members to provide support and advocacy. It also runs a searchable cold case database to help cultivate leads for law enforcement. A note was written in Jean's file about the other girls, not directly connecting the cases, but making sure any future detective looking into the case knew about the other disappearances.